All right, good. All right, hey, uh, we're here with the uh, Average Joe 4x4. Came out to Sand Hollow, and my buddy Pat, uh, he lives in St. George as well. I finally get a wheel with him on his, uh, with his willies. We've been following him around, just kind of playing, just taking it easy. He hasn't done anything pushing his capabilities. He's been, but I've been trying to keep up with him. But uh, I wanted to walk around and show what kind of rig he's got. He's done a lot to this rig, so. Uh, uh, that go ahead and explain what year it is and yeah. what you've done yeah so this is our 1956 willies truck uh, about the only thing that's 56 willies on it is the sheet metal uh, it actually sits on a 97 TJ Wrangler frame that's been modified that gets us a longer wheelbase. Uh, we're currently at 118 inches right now on a wheelbase. Uh, it's pretty darn capable. Um, we've been pretty happy with the build. Uh, it took us about 18 months to complete. It's got a Dana 60 Kingpin out of a 78 Dodge full-size truck. Uh, it's a 14 bolt full float rear end out of a uh, Chevy. And um, it's also running a GM 5.3 LS motor out of the truck. Uh, we've done a couple of different things. Kind of our goal with this build was to build something that was easily obtainable without breaking the bank. And we kind of affectionately referred to it as big plans, little budget. And so we have a lot of very durable, very capable parts that are easily accessible through your local junkyards, through your want ads, whatever it may be. So we have the LS out of the truck, the 5.3. We have a Turbo 400 that we're running that uh, we did a uh, full manual reverse valve body in. Uh, gives us a little bit different shifting pattern uh, that helps us on the rocks. Uh, basically puts reverse and first gear instead of reverse and third together and uh, allows us with no gate to kind of in panic situations kind of get us out of a out of a bind uh, we're running an NP205 transfer case we're also running an NP203 range box so that gives us a doubler on top of what we have we're running 538 gears we're running 40 inch tires from Milestar we're running the 17 inch bead locks from TR Beadlocks. Uh, we've got a whole host of uh, sponsors on this rig that really came together and kind of helped us out as we were putting it together. Uh, we're using a Skyjacker off the shelf, TJ Wrangler two and a half inch lift coil spring kit and their new ADX gas charge shocks with reservoirs. So it's been a really capable vehicle. Uh, Rigid Lights is another one that's on board. Our gearing is from Motive Gear. Uh, there's just a whole host of people that are involved in this build, and I, I, I just couldn't be happier. I mean, it's been super capable. Right. I know you guys say you've been out playing catch up with us. You know, we're out having a good time. <laughs> we just came back from EGS, and we just spent a whole week of seven and eight trails, and it's just nice to kind of come out and just yeah. kind of put around the day and just have a good time. Just a relaxed atmosphere. Yeah. Just kind yeah. of go where we want to. Yeah. And that. So, so you said it's a uh, big, big plans, low budget. Build. Yeah, big plans, little budget is kind of what we were calling it on yeah. social media. Okay. Um, the when all said and done, uh, I think we have about twenty-two thousand dollars into this build. That's not bad for um, what you've got. Here. Exactly. Uh, that doesn't include any labor. I think we tallied about a thousand hours. Okay. Total on the build. Okay. Um, and it took about eighteen months. Uh, and that was basically it. weekends and weeknights. Okay. And when I wasn't in the garage cutting and welding and yeah, you know, doing all that, I was on the internet looking and sourcing parts that we could find. Like I said, we found a lot of stuff on Craigslist and other want ads. Okay. Um, during the build, we built the truck uh, recent transplant here to St. Uh -huh. George. We were down in Southern California, and that's where we actually built the truck. Wow. Uh, Just done in the garage. Yeah. So, hey, let's build us a truck. So if you if there was guys out there wanting to do the same thing, what would you number one, two, or three word of advice to do on this? Uh. Do your research. Um, it can be one of those things. It's like I, I think you'll know as an individual if you're if you're wanting to do a build like this. If you have the capabilities to do it, if you wind up going to a shop, it's going to wind up costing you a ton yeah. of money. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, I had the ability to do that. We were able to do it in a garage with minimal tools. Right. Um, Obviously, a little more than just basic hand tools, but I mean, we yeah. did have a welder, plasma cutter, things like that. Right. And now we do have people on the outside that we were able to work with and say, yeah. hey, like our fuel cell, we had custom built. I had a guy locally, he said, hey, I'll, you know, I'll help you guys out. We'll go yeah. ahead and build it. All those little and things. So it's things like that. If you're capable of doing it, I say jump in and do it. Yeah. There's no greater satisfaction than taking and doing something like this. And when it's all said and done, taking it out, 
running the Rubicon, going to Easter Jeep Safari, coming out here to Sand Hollow or wherever you may be yeah. and driving something like this after you've spent time building it. Yeah. It, there's more yeah. satisfaction, I feel personally, more satisfaction in that than going to the dealer and dropping it off Absolutely. at a parts store. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you said, the thousand hours and man hours in there would be the killer if you couldn't do it yourself. Exactly. That would be, what is your shop time, 160 bucks an hour yeah, or something easy. like that? Yeah, easy. So, you know, you're, and, and uh, you know, a thousand hours, you know, you're going to know what you feel is, is your stopping point or yep. where your limits are and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, you could take a vehicle like this and drop it off at a shop and you could be into this thing for eighty, ninety thousand dollars Oh yeah. You know, yeah. on a build. So, yeah. um, it, it depends on, on the shops that you're going to and things like that. Again, I think there's more satisfaction in doing the work yourself. If you have the capabilities to yep. do it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you if you have the capabilities of setting to do it, and even if you don't, I mean, if you don't have all of it, you can co coordinate with shops, mm -hmm. do up and, you know, you might spend exactly. a little bit more, but... Uh, and, you know, we're all Jeepers. We all have buddies, you know, we're always trying yeah. to guide, you know, your buddies are always wanting to get involved and stuff like that. You know, recruit them, get them to yeah. come in and volunteer a little bit of time and help you out. They might have a little knowledge that you may not have. Exactly. You know, yeah. I've reached out to a couple of guys that when we were doing this and they were like, oh yeah, do this and do this. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's, it's, if you, it could be very daunting if you try and do it all on your own oh, yeah. and not enlist the help of others. I think that's probably one of the best ways to do it. All right. Well, let's uh, point out a couple of things that are your favorite. Uh, items on this, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Walk around, and take a look. Okay. Well, I think one of the coolest things that we have on this is, you know, I mentioned this is a '97 TJ Wrangler. So the Wrangler actually ends here. This is where the axle would go on the Wrangler. So we've actually cut the frame off and installed a piece of two by four rectangle tubing in there, fish plate, rosette weld, all that made it nice and strong. Extended it out the back uh, and laid in our diamond plate. So basically, it's a flat bed. Okay. Uh, bed sides are actually come off if we need to do some work, right. which we're getting ready to do some modifications on this right now. Okay. Uh, so we'll pull these off and do the work we need to do. Um, just some of the other stuff, wanting to keep kind of a uh, uh, more modern interior on it. And so we wanted to kind of spruce that up. Number one, I wanted to maintain this patina. Yeah, wanted to have this kind of old farm truck that looks cool. rock crawler look yeah. and, and keep that. Um, yeah. So we wanted to maintain that. We wanted the thing to be capable. So like I said, we researched all of the parts uh -huh. that the hardcore guys, instead of going out and spending the high-end money, mm -hmm. five dollars $6,000 on an axle right. you know, for housing, um, you can find these things for, you know, Five hundred to a thousand dollars. Sure, and you rebuild it yourself. yourself. Rebuild Take it, it apart. Yourself. That's how you're going to learn. Exactly. That's the best way you're going to learn. Because one of the things about that is, if you do the work yourself, mm -hmm. if you have a failure on the trail, exactly. now you know how to do it. That's what I've always said. If you build it, you build certain parts, and you you maintain your vehicle yourself. You have a, a trail fix. You're familiar with it. Exactly. You get it done. Exactly. And again, I think the, the the combination of having the LS with the Turbo 400, which they don't go together, so okay. there's an adaptation that has to take place right. there, right. Uh, and it's a very simple adaptation okay. that I think a lot of people are like, uh, maybe not. And uh -huh. it's nothing more than a little spacer ring that goes in the back of the crank. Is that it? Oh, yeah, okay. because the crank is not as long as it used to be in the old small block 350s. Okay. So it's a spacer, and there's a, a bolt pattern space difference on the flex plate which is no big deal. Gotcha. Fix. It's an easy, easy modification. Nice. Uh, running the NP205, it's a bulletproof, cast yeah. iron, straight gear. Yep. It's a bit of a monster sometimes to try and, you know, get into gear, but it works well. It's very durable. Uh, a lot of guys like to go with the Atlas. There's nothing wrong with that Atlas. Yeah. But again, it's a budget thing. Right. And you spend a lot of money on that, you know, to, to do an Atlas, and it's a fabulous uh, gearbox. Right. Um, but again, we were trying to keep things on a budget. So. Right, right. But yeah, just finding little things. You know, we got the military lights, tail lights. A lot of the vets like those. They see them, they go, oh, I know oh, yeah. what those are out of. Yep. You know, so we did that. Um, we affectionately named it Evil Willies. Uh, That's cool. Yep. Yeah. Put the tire carrier on the back, so that gives us some more space underneath so we can carry some of our, our goods. Um, when we did UA, it was one of the things, you have to be self-sufficient on the trail. Right. So you have to have all your spare parts, you have to have all your tools, you have to have all your living quarters, your tent, your camping, all that stuff. Right. And right. so we actually had stuff piled up on the tire right. um, to get where we were going. <laughs> so, so we got a guy coming yeah. down the trail. <laughs>
But UA, what is UA? UA is Ultimate Adventure. Uh, it's put on by Four Wheel Parts. Uh, I'm sorry, not Four Wheel Parts. Four Wheel and Off Road Magazine. Okay. Um, unfortunately, that magazine was actually uh, was kind of put to rest, so that magazine doesn't exist anymore. But UA is still going on. Okay. Uh, you can actually go on UltimateAdventure.com, and you can apply. That's what we did. We applied two years in a row. Right. That was our main goal, was to actually build this, this for Ultimate build Adventure. For Ultimate Adventure. Okay. And uh, the first year we got chosen for the what they refer to as the Dirty Dozen. We didn't make it. Uh, the second year we did actually make it. Oh, cool. uh, and so we did actually get to participate in Ultimate Adventure 2020. That's nice. It's fun. Looks like a great vehicle. Everybody, when you pass everybody, they look. They got to look. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's it's a great conversation piece. Yep. Yep. <laughs> cool. Great. Well, hey, thanks for showing us. Your you people. Betcha. Yeah. Appreciate thank you. It. I appreciate it.